Good morning, Sodom and Gomorrah. Good morning, Sinner. You like my super expensive production background? Huh? Yeah, that's great, man. Mm. Really, uh, really fantastic. Roland Dot did himself. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll uh, we'll start the show then. In three, two, one. How about that? Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the Crypto Degenerates, as you can see from Darko's backdrop. This is the Crypto Degenerates. I'm Rob. That's Darko. We're your hosts. Back again for another week of um, <clears throat> whatever it is you want to designate this as um, in your mind. However, uh, for us, it's just a fun show that we do. I am in my uh, studio set today. No green screen. This is this is where I find myself spending most of my time. Um, and uh, as we get closer to the holiday season, I thought I'd do a little more of a a personal show and uh, invite you all in and, and we could spend some time in front of this nice wall that I've obviously put some effort into putting together. Darko, how, how are you doing tonight? Pretty damn good up until the last sentence where I burped and I smelt the tuna I had several hours ago. It was pretty rank, man. Mm. But I'm also in front of my super cool, super expensive, super production-like background. It's amazing. I love this background. The crypto degenerates, man. What a place to be. Mm. Unbelieve it. Unbelieve it. Dude, we have had some ups and downs in the crypto world in the last several days, but there's excitement, but there's not excitement. There's things moving sideways, but in a bullish sense, things aren't going down, which is the case in point in bullish sense, but things aren't exactly going stupidly up either. It's more of a sideways movement. What will happen between now and Christmas? Will people start selling off to buy Christmas presents and all that funky shit for friends, family, whatever? Or will they find it as another opportunity to buy and accumulate more? We've had PayPal hasn't changed its stance on where it stands with crypto, which is pretty awesome. Yet you'd expect a lot more price action as well, which is not happening because manipulative exchanges have been selling, sending whale transactions because just... Anybody and everybody has $500 million worth of Bitcoin in their accounts or $600 million worth of Bitcoin in their accounts to just sell off whenever they feel like it. You know what I'm saying? So every time the price does seem to move up and looks really good, we have these massive whale transactions headed for the exchanges mm -hmm. just randomly. Because like I said, it's everybody and anybody has half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin sitting there to be moved, right? Mm. So how long will this last for? How long will it last? Will the mass adoption via PayPal amongst others, other institutions, counterfeit these manipulative exchanges? Time will tell. But I think 2021 is going to be an interesting year. Having said that, Rob, having said that, we have two more crypto degenerates after tonight for this year. Oh. Two more. That's mm. it, huh? <clears throat> Yes, what a year it's been. Indeed, uh, you know I, what? I, I don't think there will be many people that are sad to see 2020 go and pass into the ages. Then we can finally, you know, just seal the book on what it is this year had to had to whip out on us and say that, all right, well, you know, that was it. Nothing else. I tell you, yeah, I tell you what, though, a lot of people have said this has been the worst year of their lives. Yeah, but honestly, in all honesty, it's been one of the best years of my life, with the exception of I've had about six people pass away this year. Oh. So, yeah, because so other than that, it's been one of the, my best years of my life. I mean, I enjoyed the lockdown. I enjoyed the whole hermit thing. I didn't have to deal with idiots out in public, so to speak. Uh, uh, so. well, it, it, that's one of the ironies to come out of the situation. You know, I, I am... Uh... Uh, bitterly anti-lockdown. I, I don't believe that that's the way you uh, uh, you do things. But um, 
what's funny is is that I maintain that stance despite a selfish um, interest in or uh, I don't know what you'd call it but yeah I, as you say I, I much prefer the conditions of the lockdown as it is you know I spend enough time trying to avoid the uh, uh, stupider element of our society and it's hard to step mm. out of the front door um, I have a sign over there on the door danger restricted area so that if I go to leave, I know that I'm entering a restricted area. This, it's not restricted in here. This is this is a wonderful good old bubble of freedom and, and, and happiness. Um, as soon as I go out of here, anything goes. I don't know, fucking yeah. It, it's based on what people want to serve up, and and the things they want to serve up uh, are not always very palatable. So. And on a slightly relevant yet irrelevant point, it's both slightly relevant and irrelevant. What's the story with the U.S. stimulus packages? Are they still proceeding? Because they were delayed from, what, two months ago now. And the reason why I'm asking this is because every time a, there's a U.S. stimulus package, the price of Bitcoin booms because the deposits go up. People use that stimulus package. So has there been any updates or announcements with regards to what's going on there? Uh, you're asking the wrong person. I, I really don't know one way or the other. Mm. Uh, well, okay. I, well, I mean, uh, other than know, that... <clears throat> uh, the um, there there was another one promised, and, and that's been you know that that's the package that goes out to to people generally. Um, there has still oh. been stimulus flowing, but it's been more to businesses and and such uh, landlords, things like that. Um, but uh, the the one the, the type of stimulus that resulted in uh, all of the Bitcoin purchases was a an individual. You know, stimulus provided to people based oh. on their tax paying status, and uh, it, the the second one, yeah, I'm I'm not even sure if it's overdue. I don't know when it was promised for. I, I'm not. I'm it was it was sure. scheduled. From what I remember, it was scheduled for pre-election, and then Trump stalled it for post-election. But I haven't yeah, heard anything yeah, since. It's something like that. Um, I don't think we'll see any traction until the situation about what's going on with leadership here is made clear. There's still a large mm. dispute about who, who won the presidency and, um, you know, one side's trying to just brush over it. The other side's not letting go. Who the hell knows how that's going to turn out. Uh, but any money coming out of Washington, uh, it's all going to be tied up with that. So, And also going back a couple of minutes ago to what you said, where you didn't agree with the whole lockdown thing. I'm with you on that as well, 100 percent. But ironically and hypocritically speaking, when we were in lockdown here, whenever there was an extension to the lockdown, so the lockdown was coming, you know, it was due to end. And then I'll add another two, two week extension or a four week extension. While, while they added the extensions, I was like, you guys are fucking idiots. These politicians, man, like this is not the best way to go about this. The whole lockdown shit is, you know, depriving you of your rights and all that other shit. But then the moment they announced the extension, I'm like, yes. <laughs> hey, listen, nobody is saying that it's not uh, possible to benefit from things which are immoral. It's not, it, listen, I go hold up a fucking gas station. I, I can benefit mm. greatly from that. I mean, if I get away, right, my, my pockets are now filled with money that I didn't have before. But, uh, you know, that's not really the way we, uh, we seek benefits. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, uh, and that may be more like some stolen money falling off the back of a truck and you, you go and pick it up, you know, you're not really responsible for having done that, right? So you didn't order the lockdown, so we, we can't blame you for that, but uh, are you going to pick up the bundle of money? Yeah, you're going to pick up the fucking bundle of money. Sure. I, I you know, whatever. That's your business. Uh, and I personally, again, uh, you know, don't mind certain things about the uh, results of it but I, I i do mind certain other things a, a, a there's principles and, and principles are, are principles they don't go away because you might gain some benefit or whatever so you know if you have those those get in the way of everything but uh then there's also uh, other effects that i don't like now i may like the the idea of, of people keeping more to themselves i don't like the idea of, of businesses that people work their whole lives uh to build and struggled for shutting down because they're not allowed to open i i don't like well that's the all. catch that's the catch 22 but on another note that's relevant apparently visits to porn sites tripled throughout the lockdown periods 
And just recently, there was an announcement from Pornhub saying that they've suspended, a, they, they've not with suspended, they've cancelled their partnership with Visa and MasterCard. So the only other payment solution left now is Bitcoin. You know what? Well, now you're getting ahead of yourself because that's one of our, our headlines for this evening. Uh, really? Yeah. So why don't we just uh, jump right into it? But that's not where we're gonna where we're gonna start. We will start uh, where we always love to end up here, and that's crime. Uh, you know, if you want to get your reports on crypto crime, you come to the crypto degenerates. I mean, where else would you go? Uh, at one point here, this gentleman had uh, DJ Coed and Floyd. Mayweather, I, I I got his name right, but I don't know about DJ uh, Khaled. Maybe I'm saying that right. Maybe I'm not. Khaled, Khaled, Khaled. Uh, uh, they promoted his 2017 ICO. At that point, he was on the top of the fucking world. I bet you there was a list. You know, if you wanted to talk to him, you probably had to, you know, get on that list. And oh, I'm gonna look at that. Ah, uh, yeah, for my penthouse, I'm going to stand here and read this list. No, you're not important enough. No, you're not important enough. No, you talk to the fucking wall. Yeah, I'm on you. Bring that fucking cocaine over here. Shit is fucking fantastic. Everything's going through the roof. Wet moon, baby. But now, oh, only two years late, three years later, uh, Robert Farkas. <laughs> Robert Farkas is fucked. Robert Farkas will face a <laughs> felony. Oh, boy. Does it get any better than this? No, Robert Farkas is fucked because he's facing a felony uh, for his role in Centratech's 2017 ICO. A Manhattan court has sentenced the operator of the fraudulent crypto investment firm Centratech to a year and a day in prison. Well, what was the point of that? Why would they write? You know, the law is such a strange fucking thing. And I'm sure yeah. there is something that that corresponds to and some reason why that was done. But a year and a day, I, I mean, seriously, that's like, you know, 15 life sentences. Oh, okay, sure. I'll serve <clears throat> them all. Um, now the Department of Justice says that he so, uh, successfully solicited $25 million in investment during the 2017 ICO boom uh, promotion from uh, Floyd Mayweather, uh, who also got into trouble with the SEC here. Um, on top of the celebrity endorsements, uh, his scheme included lies about Centratech's licensing as a money services business in 38 states. That was a lie. As well as partnerships uh -huh. with Visa and MasterCard. That was a lie. Now, given the uh -huh. brazen nature of the operation, prosecutors were apparently looking to throw the book at Farkas. Uh, today's sentence is consequently lighter than expected. Oh, um, with one year and a day being the minimum for him to qualify as a felon. So I guess it had to be more than a year, and that's what the day is for. Uh, they did want to stick him with the felony, uh, but they gave him uh, the lightest sentence they could have uh, while still making sure that he was a felon. In the United States, I don't know how it is in Australia, but a felony is a class of crime, and it once you hit that class of crime, there are all sorts of restrictions that will follow him now. Uh, for his life, and that'll include financial mm. things that he's allowed to do. I, I, I guess they wanted to make sure that he was hit with that felony, uh, and that's why he got the sentence that he did. Fun fact, DJ Khaled, as you mentioned, if you say his name backwards, it's Delac. 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 Almost if you look like at his a, name... Like a, like a Moroccan yeah. Dalek, right? Yeah, DJ Exterminate. Exterminate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But no. Interesting article, though, Rob, because back in 2017, I do recall this ICO uh. being conducted, and I do recall the promotions by Mayweather. I don't know about Delac, because I don't think I saw any of his shit. But from what I recall back then, when the news broke out about this illicit activity, both those people, Mayweather and Khaled Delac, got paid $500 million a piece to shield this shit, and the SEC fined them 500000 yeah, yeah, a yeah, piece. Yeah. So they broke out even. They didn't win or lose anything. And as I said, I do recall this ICO, and I was actually really close to jumping in on this ICO. Mm. And the only reason why I didn't are you ready for this? Is because, do you remember that fucking idiot YouTuber, Superman? 
Oh. Superman, Superman, he's a fucking idiot. He started promoting it. He started talking highly about it because obviously he bought himself some bags and anything this guy promotes, you stay away from. Mm. So I was really close to buying into this central ICO mm. and then his video came up and I was skimming through it. I, he, does, he used to do live ones. I don't know if he still does them. And then I saw him talking shilling Centra. I thought, great, now I'm put off. Now I'm not buying this shit. Uh, and thank fuck I didn't because well, look what happened now. A thank you card. Yeah, well, yeah, he's a fucking idiot. He's you could write that in the idiot. card. But it, the, 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 the considerate thing, he did you a favor. You should send him a thank you card. You know what, dude? He, he used to be all right when he first started because I used to watch him when he had a couple thousand subscribers. And I, I remember he then, once he reached 5,000 subs, he very quickly doubled to 10,000. And in that time frame between 5,000 and 10,000 subs, he just became an egomaniac jerk off, man. Oh. Total egomaniac jerk off. And he, from what I remember, he went up to something like 100 and something thousand subscribers. And he's just a fucking wanker, absolute wanker. I, I'll tell you how many subs this dickhead has now, but man, so many people lost so much money because of this guy, because of the shit that he was promoting. So many people. A lot of people were even Not threatening he saved legal action. He saved you money. Well, saved me money, but a lot of people <laughs> lost because of him. He saved you money. <clears throat> you, you saved 131,000 subscribers. Hmm. Yeah. But like I said, I used to enjoy watching him up until his first 5,000 subs. Mm -hmm. And the transition was very noticeable. Uh, well, you that. know, it, ha it happens to, to a lot of people. And, um, you know, to some extent, it can be a little forgiven. You start seeing success and your head blows up. And, you know, I, I've, I've seen it happen to more than one person personally. Um, yeah, but you know what this dickhead did once? And if you look hard enough on YouTube, you'll find it somewhere. Because people made videos about it. Uh, he was doing, he was shilling some project that was coming up in an ICO and he's really hyping it up. Yeah. Cause this guy, he's got the subs and he's getting the views. So he obviously, you know, made deals behind the scenes and he's shilling, shilling, shilling this project really hard. And while he's, this is on a live stream, by the way, not pre-recorded while he's shilling this project, he got an email notification on his screen from said company. He was shilling saying just confirming we have now sent you the two btc for the review <laughs> and and you know what his reaction was hmm. he quickly closed the x button and he goes oh you guys never saw that live Ooh. live yeah it's fucking funny never saw it at all yeah but yeah some people caught on and they make, quickly made videos about it wow. so if you look hard enough you'll probably still find it on youtube somewhere but he's a fucking jerk off, man. Complete oh, it fucking sounds like idiot. you definitely don't like him. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have Mr. Farkas, uh, who will now be on his way to jail. I'm never happy to see anybody go to jail. However, uh, as you know, I'm the first person to object uh, to the liberal use of the word scam in our industry. People lose money. They want to be like, scam, 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 scam. But when we have evidence of an actual scam, okay, they told Deliberate, people, deliberate. They, they told people one thing. And they intended yeah. to do another, and the whole idea was to part them with their money on false pretenses. Yep. I'm 100% in favor of, of enforcement actions being taken against them. That's fraud, and there's no excuse for that. Um, you can't lie to people when you're asking them for money. That's not the right thing to do. I think it was Centra, again, who started approaching crypto YouTubers with big amounts of cash to, to shield the shit. But I think at, by that point, the SSC had already issued warnings that any crypto YouTuber that accepted money from Centra to do a review, that SSC was going to come down hard on them too. So nobody did it, apparently. Oh, smart. Yeah. Yeah. I um, think they were offering like anywhere between $20,000 and $50,000 per review. It wasn't a little bit of money. Right. Yeah. So they made their money from the ICO, $25 million, whatever it was. And that was splurging on marketing to get more sales up. And I think it was one of those ICOs where week one, you buy at this rate, and then it goes up the second week. Mm. So if you miss out on week one, you, you buy less the yeah, second and week and the third week. that's an old technique, and, and scams and non-scams <laughs> use it alike. Um, you know, I've seen mm. things that were, that were not scams that, that still tried to play on that, you know, you're going to miss out. That's a, a very 
human, um, you know, characteristic, if you want to call it that, uh, that is easy to exploit if you're determined to do so. And I, you'll see a lot of things. Some of them are honest and some of them are dishonest, but they still, they set up that way where they're like, if you don't, you know, buy in now, you're going to miss out. It's that sense that yeah. I better reach for my wallet. But what you see in the more honest endeavors that do that is that very often there is some correlation. Um, you know, people that tend to buy in earlier on something are going to help out that thing succeed more than, than people that are coming in later. There is no lie to that. Um, so, you know, you say, well, where's the line? I can't tell you where the line is. You know, it's a fuzzy line. But on one side of that line, there is the utility of rewarding early investors. On the other side of that line is, you know, playing with people's emotions because you know they don't want to miss out on the next big thing. Nobody wants to be the schmuck who's sitting there, you know, while everybody else has got, has got money and they got the pancakes that they bought. You know, nobody wants to be that guy, right? So, Do you like pancakes, Rob? Yeah. I or love do you pancakes. love pancakes? I love pancakes. Oh, you love? You're, you're a pancake lover. Uh, so right. what do you like? How do, how do you like your pancakes? Do you put anything on top? Do you like them on their own? Syrup. Not syrup. Ma maple syrup. Maple syrup? Maple syrup, yeah. And no ice cream or not whipped cream? Not the shit or... fucking syrup. That, you know, not, not shit syrup. Not the corn syrup. I like maple syrup. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had a pancake. Oh, God, mm. man. Pancakes, waffles, um, breakfast sausages. I like waffles. Hash browns, bacon. Oh, bacon. Nothing like bacon. <laughs> You're deliberately talking about food because I told you before the stream that I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a Belgian waffle maker. It makes fantastic waffles. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Those are good with ice cream. Uh, pancakes, not so much. But the Belgian waffles have the spaces and they're rigid, so they hold the ice cream. And then you can cut it up and have it. It's fantastic. Hmm. Mm. I might look out for a waffle maker because it's been a very long time since I've had a waffle. Oh boy, man, you are missing out. You're missing out. Yeah, you want to have some? You make yourself a waffle, then make yourself some fucking eggs. Make yourself some bacon. Throw it all on top of the fucking waffle with some cheese, and just like you know, forget the rest of your morning. You're gonna eat that shit, and you're just gonna be in the chair for the next hour, like. Hell no. <laughs> Life is fucking good. <laughs> you know, we, we've, we've, we've got a pancakes franchise here and they make all these different assortments of pancakes. Uh. And one of them is like fish pancake. All right, that's fucking nasty. Yeah. <laughs> another one is... Uh, pole. <laughs> yeah, another one is like a na nacho pancake. <laughs> Or a beef burrito pancake. Yeah, see, man, you know, I listen, no. Um, you know, maybe some fruits on top, some whipped cream. I'm not putting anything other than that. On, you know, eggs, yeah, breakfast foods, okay. None of the fucking, you know, that, that, all that shit you're describing is not, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, how, how can people eat like a fish souvlaki? I don't, I don't get I, it. You know, half the things that people put... I mean, there's people out there who want us all eating bugs. Those people can go fuck themselves, okay? I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I really don't know what to tell you. The things that people see fit to eat, kippers, kippered fucking fishes. I, I mean, pickled kippers, pickled kippers. I can't even fucking look at them. Uh, uh, pickled herring, I can't even look at it. I, I, uh, I see people eating pickled herring, beets, fucking beets. Who eats beets? And, and I was like, What's my, my wife gets the fucking, the, uh, she, she likes beets. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you cooking those fucking things for, man? They're a fucking water vegetable. It has no flavor. It's just stupid. I mean, people eat oh, it. Oh, is that beetroot? Beets. Beet. Beetroot. Yeah, beetroot. Whatever you want to call it. Beet. You don't like beetroot? No, I don't like fucking beets. I like them. Especially in a hamburger. God. You're refreshing. Dude, you got to be kidding me. I don't know, man. Maybe oh, they taste different you know here. You, but... know what, you know what else? Those fucking water chestnuts. I hate water chestnuts. They fucking suck, okay? They have no uh, flavor. The texture is awful. They make your tongue dry. I, I mean, like, when one of them sneaks into my food, I'm like, how the fuck? How do people eat these? I don't think I've ever tried that shit before, so I don't know. I can't comment. Uh, water chestnuts are nasty, dude, and they put them in Chinese food dishes here. If you don't say, don't put them in, they put them in. 
What I might do is I might have to send you a can of beetroot from here. See if it tastes different. Yeah, I'll give it to my wife and she can tell you. <laughs> I'm actually taking a note. Uh, okay. Well, you mentioned it earlier, but you weren't quite very accurate about a certain aspect of it. I am here to correct you now. Um, Pornhub, no longer doing business with Visa and MasterCard. However, it was not, as you said, their decision. And they did not drop their accounts with Visa and MasterCard. They have been banned okay. permanently by MasterCard. Uh, permanently blocked. And Visa will continue to monitor its decision. But they, too, have blocked Pornhub. So they're not allowed. To, this was thrust upon them. It ended up, uh, and the reason why we're bringing this up, this is good news for Verge. And Verge has seen a little bit of a spike uh, as the result of this announcement. Um, and that's because right now, Pornhub is flying crypto only in terms of payment options. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, again, not by choice. Um, this was thrust upon them, and Pornhub has now been uh, embroiled in a bunch of controversies. I saw a separate article now. Uh, they are now uh, purging all unverified content from their site. Um, and, uh, you know, it looks, according to this as if that move may help them with Visa, and they can begin to make the case that, you know, uh, the operation now meets criteria that are, are legitimate, uh, and Visa might take mm. them back. But MasterCard says they are never, ever, ever taking Pornhub back. Wow. Yeah. That's a big statement. Yeah, it is. Wow. Um, all right, well, this is, I guess I've got... This is all over handling uh, their handling of content, dude. You know, I if you're going to, uh, you know, could they take a lesson from this and say we're just going to stay crypto only? I guess they can watch and see what happens to their bottom line. But this is an object lesson to people that want to, and it may be something everybody in crypto should look at. If you have a business mm. and if you're going to deal with other businesses in a particular space, okay, so Visa mastercard are from traditional finance and have a long track record of making what we would call ethical choices for their uh, clients right um if you're going to depend on them you better follow their guidelines it's no longer what we're free to do as a company it's what this other company wants us to do and they just learn the hard way that if you run afoul of that they can take everything away from you just like that. Now, imagine if this happened to them and there was no cryptocurrency. They would right now be in the position of saying, what, mail us cash? <laughs> Send us you know, for the internet? <clears throat> really? What are they going to say to people? So they are they should be thanking their lucky stars that cryptocurrency exists. Yeah, but they've still got PayPal. Yeah. Uh... Do they use PayPal? I don't even know if they use PayPal. But now that you've mentioned this article, Rob... You've made me realize I no longer have a use case for my, for my MasterCard anymore. <laughs> uh, no, PayPal. PayPal blocked them first. Oh, really? Visa That's and MasterCard news to my ears. follow PayPal in shunning the world's biggest porn site. So, no, they don't have PayPal. That's why the article's saying they're crypto only right now. The only way they can take money from people is to take cryptocurrency. So, what if... All right, PayPal shut them first... But what if PayPal allows their clients to send their Bitcoin from PayPal to Pornhub? Yeah. That would be an interesting case. Hmm. Well, yeah, maybe they're I mean, you know, super somebody, pro Bitcoin. Well, if any of our viewers uses Pornhub and also uses PayPal, maybe they would like to see what happens and then. Darko, do you, should, do you want to give your spiel? Should they put it in the comment box? Is that what they should do? Yes, and that goes for you too, Roland. We know you're an addict on that website, so please let us know what the go is there. But yeah, leave a comment down beneath this video. Oh, ah. well, you know, I, I, technically speaking, if uh, the PayPal uh, system, I, I don't know, I haven't checked it out, but if it's attached to a, a, a real-world address... All right, what we'll call an actual, if they expose an actual address on the Bitcoin blockchain, I don't know whether they do or they don't. Um, technically speaking, if you took that key, you should be able to spend PayPal Bitcoins on Pornhub. 
If you have to use so their maybe interface, this is... I could see them blocking it. If they're not doing, if they won't let Pornhub take PayPal. Mm. Yeah. So maybe the PayPal is super duper pro crypto. Maybe this is part of their master plan, their genius master plan. Well, if there's PayPal's a geniuses, uh, geniuses at PayPal. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Okay. Um, we could be onto something, Rob. Well, uh, here we go. This is Maybe we just foiled their plan. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to think that there's a, a room somewhere in PayPal's headquarters with a bunch of people sitting back, maybe with <clears> cigars, <throat> laughing. What, you know? Mm. There, there's nothing quite like that. Uh, if you haven't in your life, you know, sat back, I, maybe you scored some triumph or another. The next time Rob. you have a, the next time you have a major triumph, okay, what you should do, people, is, is treat yourself to the pleasure of sitting back like a villain. I mean, pick whoever you know you want. There's plenty of, of Hollywood villains, but like a Hollywood villain, and just give yourself a good laugh, like a maniacal, you know, villain laugh. You know that you, it has to come with mm. an achievement for it to have its full effect. But let me tell you, nothing quite matches that feeling. Especially when you've actually done something, and then you just enjoy that laugh. I'd have to disagree with you. Something can quite match that feeling, because I just found some fantastic news, Rob. Oh, what's the news? Fantastic news. Mm -hmm. Can I get you to open up your coin gecko for a moment? Open up my coin gecko? What the fuck does that? Yeah, even coin mean? gecko. What? No, not your coin. You know what I mean. If you go to coin gecko. <laughs> Well, look, right. look in my pants and find my coin gecko. <laughs> yeah. I just discovered some That's amazing news, bro. Though. I just discovered some like amazing that? news. Open up your coin gecko. Oh, is this and, cultural? And tickle what, it slowly. What the fuck is going on here? All right. All right. Uh, trust me, this is worth it. Oh, coin yeah, gecko, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, click on the biggest loser. So at the top, where the, go to 24 hour. Go you get what? the biggest winners first, and then you get the 24-hour column. 24-hour, right. right. All right. Yeah. Click on that so you can get the biggest losers, and tell me who's the biggest loser tonight. Uh, the second biggest loser. The second biggest the loser biggest. is XRP. I've got number one biggest loser. Nope. Vite really? is beating it out. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting XRP, dude. Mm. Number one, biggest loser. Down 10.1% for the last 24 hours and down 20% for the last seven days. It seems XRP ripple uh, back to their old tricks again and dumping on their own investors. While the rest of the markets are looking pretty decent, although they're moving sideways, they're more in the positive side of sideways than the negative side of sideways. Yet XRP is down, 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 baby. Fantastic news. I love it. Oh, I love it. Darko. You, you know, uh, a former JP Morgan executive just joined Ripple's board. Really? Is that false news? What? Is that a marketing publicity stunt? No. CEO, sure? Brad, CEO Brad Garlinghouse said, uh, you know, all other things aside, what a wonderful name. Garlinghouse. Well, it makes you wonder uh, what's the history of that fucking name. What a strange name. Uh, 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 said O'Connor's experience would help Ripple build a more inclusive financial system. Wow, that's a that's a meaningful yeah, statement. Yeah, minus XRP, <laughs> minus XRP. Huh? Uh, he, he's going to provide counsel on key government relations and regulatory initiatives. Um, oh, she. O'Connor's a woman, uh, and she's uh, she was uh, at J.P. Morgan for 31 years, serving as Chief Regulatory Affairs Officer and Treasurer for the bank before retiring in 2019. Wow. I mean, yeah, that sounds boring. Uh, but now she's going to be doing <laughs> shit like that for Ripple uh, and helping them uh, understand the regulatory framework. This seems to come on the heels of them complaining that the regulatory framework here in the States was too, um, you know, opaque and difficult to navigate and threatening to move overseas. This may be an intermediary step in between that, saying, let's bring in somebody who knows these waters 
and uh, see if they can navigate them for us, and we don't have to leave. Uh, you know, it's one thing to make a threat, but uh, and you, I know you don't like them, but uh, they are so, uh, uh, an entity of size, and no matter who it is, moving an entity of size like that is going to be a massive, massive undertaking with a lot of fucking pain points. I, I can imagine them, threats aside, not wanting to actually do it. I, I, like you get my drift put aside your feelings mm. for the moment and just consider the problem it, it, they said that and, and they were sending a message by saying that but do they want to pick up and move to switzerland or wherever the fuck it is their entire yeah. operation all the routes they have down no I, I don't think they do and this is probably something they're looking to do to, to prevent that I don't get it. I mean, XRP boasts over 500 partnerships from what I recall, and most of them are with international banks, yet we're not seeing any use cases with any international banks. And after all those partnerships, which would be at least a couple of hundred of them with banks internationally, they still can't get a deal with PayPal, which raises some huge concerns right there. So they're huge, as you said, yes, but why? What exactly, other than signatures on a piece of paper, why are they huge? Why? They, they, they've built an Anna? ecosystem, Darko, and there, and there are people participating in it. I mean, I don't have an answer for you. You could say why as in, as in there's no value. The, uh, in the crypto sphere, there's massive, uh, you know, people tend to fall out on one side or the other. They either hate Ripple or, or they're fucking all about XRP. And I, and I said that just like that for a reason. Um, you know, it's not like the people that I've seen that are pro XRP or are all about Ripple, although they do talk about what they expect the company to do. The people who are against it point out case after case of a lot of hot air. They point out the, the huge amount that they allotted themselves and the, the selling that appears to have gone on. There's, mm. you know, a number of points here. Now, Ripple saying we want it. The, the problem is, is that their vision, it's not like there's no place for what they're saying they want to do. It, what isn't clear is that they've actually gotten the traction to do these things. Then they keep announcing, like you say, partnership. We see Wells Fargo and it, we see nothing materialize from these things. We don't see XRP becoming the standard for really anything. Um, yeah. you know, we're just going to have to wait this one out. I mean, I, you, along with a lot of other people, would like to just see it fold up. But I don't see it going that way. They seem to have some staying power, uh, part of which is their ability to continue selling these coins unless, uh, right, unless they're instructed to burn them. So, as you remember, we reported last week that the, if the people uh, in the ecosystem, the holders, get fed up enough, they can vote to, to force that decision. Uh, and then Ripple mm. would have to burn and destroy all of the coins. Um, now, those would only be the public coins, not the coins held by individuals which might see a uh, spike in value were that to happen. So we discussed all this. It is one of those dark corners of, of things where, you know, we're probably never going to find agreement. We just have to see where it goes. Uh, I, 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 you know, it's anybody's guess. Mm, I'm just getting a transmission coming in from Roland, and I think we might need to have a serious talk with him, dude, The pro <laughs> our program engineer, Roland. I he just said that he, ch he changed his Facebook name to benefits so when people add him it says you are now friends with benefits oh, oh. Is, isn't that nice isn't that nice too bad they take one look at him and they're like fuck no i'm not and they quickly unfriend <laughs> yeah you get no fucking benefits yeah. from me motherfucker well according to his own recent scientific study he said that he found pregnant women who use vibrators are 90 percent more likely to have a child that stutters Oh, hang up with him. Fuck off, Roland. <laughs> you know, Roland, man, this woman did not rob a stagecoach so that you could tell those ridiculously poor, crass jokes. Oh, all right. Now, come on. Uh, Riot, we know Riot, the Bitcoin miners, Riot, uh, big mining concern. Uh, I, I believe a publicly listed company, and they do Bitcoin mining. Riot. Uh, so they're going to test immersion cooling Bitcoin mining technology in Texas. I thought this was pretty cool. Um, they uh, are piloting a new liquid cooling technology for mining hardware. 
to, to uh, test solutions for effective mining in difficult temperature environments. So this eight megawatt immersion technology uh, is going to completely submerge the mining equipment in liquid and do the cooling that way. So you have no air cooling. Now what's the difference? Not only does liquid cooling offer significant noise reduction, that's true, compared with fan cooling, uh, immersional, immersion cooling can also increase usable hash rate per machine by up to 50% in some cases because it's going to more effectively cool the machine than yeah. air cooling. So air cooling, more noise, less <clears throat> effective cooling. We know this from computers now. Uh, you know, if you want to turn your processor up, you have to get liquid cooling. This takes it a step further. This is in contact with liquid cooling. This is full immersion liquid cooling. Um, we actually talked about this. <coughs> we talked about the idea of, of uh, miners moving, moving to Russia and whether there would be opportunities there given the climate. Now, one of the biggest things about Bitcoin mining and doing it profitably is cooling. It's, it's going to be a big part of your expenses, and it's a big part of, of how you run your operation. And it's fucking important. And if you can shave pennies or dollars off of those costs, and you can more make your equipment more effective, you have an advantage. Now, people, these miners are largely getting their equipment from the same places. They're, they're going to be using the same devices. They have to get their advantages from other places. Cooling is one of those sort of squishy areas where I can give one person an, an ASIC miner and another person an ASIC miner, and they're going to get different amounts of money out of it. Why? And that's one of the big whys. How many megawatt did you say? This is a test. These are eight megawatt, <coughs> eight megawatt immersion technology. Now, I don't know if that's per unit or what. All uh. right. That's a lot, dude, because one megawatt equals 1,000 kilowatts, mm -hmm. and 1,000 kilowatts equals 1 million watts. Mm -hmm. So megawatts are used to measure the output of a power plant, right? And for a typical coal plant, it's about 600 megawatts mm -hmm. in size. So we're, we're talking about a ma you know, few people could probably Massive. do this kind of test. And we're, because we're talking about a, a concern that's already mining on a massive, massive scale. Massive. So massive. what they're going to do is they're going to say, we're going to take this amount of their mining, which I'm sure doesn't represent all of it. They call it a test. So that's some fraction of, of their ability to, to mine. And they're doing it in this full immersion um, environment. Now, that, that's... What, what are they going to look for? They're going to look for reliability. Is there a decrease in reliability? Um, uh, it, the uh, cost, how does it impact the cost, and what you get out of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But just, to, but just to give the viewers a, a clearer picture, like 8 megawatts is basically powering up a whole suburb, and this is a, a crypto mining operation. <laughs> That's how much power they're using, like a whole suburb, if you think about it. It's, this is the reason why there's criticism from some corners of you know environmental sort of thinking people about Bitcoin. Mm. And a lot of the proof of stake coins have gone out of their way to point out, you know, you're burning through this electricity basically as a way to prove the currency. There are other ways to prove the currency. And, and proof of proof of um, proof of stake, I, I'm sorry to say after this many years that it's that it's not working and not able to provide a stable platform is a little silly. A number of coins have done it and they've done it well. But they're only talking about the heat. What about the radiation? No one's mentioning the radiation. That's a lot of fucking radiation, man. Well, electromagnetic radiation. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, this may be somebody's work day. I don't think that they're, you know, uh, have a bed in the place <laughs> you can sleep underneath this shit. But I mean, it's a, this is something that you would find in an industrial area. This is not a, a you know, like set up in somebody's garage. This yeah, company no. does this professionally. This company is one of the reasons why you can't just fire up your GPU and mine Bitcoin. There's no point. You can't do it profitably mm. because you're competing with concerns like this. And I mean, I saw inside one of these commercial level operations uh, a while back in, in conjunction with a company I was doing some work for. And, uh, you know, the concerns, I mean, literally, uh, the extent that they take it to where you're measuring pennies and, and those pennies are the difference in your profitability or not to pay based on how you're running those machines. I mean, it's not 
it's a very stressful industry for the people that are that are into it. And we've mm. seen miners, entire mining you know, concerns drop off. They gave up. Um, remember the pictures coming out of China, of just dumpsters full of miners, um, you know, as these people had to move on because they weren't able uh, after uh, Bitcoin's price cash uh, crash to continue mining profitably. That's how tight these margins can be. And the more you get bigger companies doing this kind of thing, the more it pushes the scale that way. Now, this is why other coins have sort of uh, introduced features against that. They, they, they don't oh. like what that does to decentralization. So they're trying to make it difficult for ASIC miners to monopolize the industry. Um, Bitcoin's oh. not one of them. Bitcoin, it's open season. And uh, that's why you can have a, comp excuse me, a company like this. Now, what they learn maybe could be applied by others. So they're reporting on this. People know uh, that they're doing this. Other companies that are doing Bitcoin mining can watch their profitability reports, can watch what they say in public about it, although I wouldn't take my indication necessarily from that. They're going to say what they want people to hear, but they can look at, at profitability. It's a public company, so they can look right you know, at the numbers that they report, and they can see whether or not something like this is going to work out for them, uh, because it's a big if. And the thing about heat and the thing about computers and heat is that something that will work sometimes on a small scale cannot be scaled up. So you may say, I have this great way to cool my graphics card. And, you know, I, I worked it all out and it dissipates the heat this way. And you find that when you put a hundred of them in a pool of water thinking it's going to work the same way, it doesn't because of the principles of, of how heat works and it, it becomes a cumulative effect. So this... Oh kind of large-scale experiment will potentially be instructive for other people to say, is there a future in this? And I would think about the people that either w w would move to or start up their operations in colder climates. How could you not be looking around at all that snow and saying, I'm paying for fucking fans? Like, <laughs> you know, why, why would I pay for fucking fans? Why am I going to cool mm. these devices with fans? Now, I don't want that snow on the circuit boards i don't want that so you have to figure out a way to utilize that environment to you know benefit from that cold and get the heat off fast enough so that's the other problem oh. with you know cooling <clears throat> something and you can surround it with cold and yes heat will move towards the cold but if it doesn't do it fast enough it ain't gonna fucking work so you have to design that but if you design it think about somebody in, a, in an arctic climate that is pulling all of their heat at a fast enough rate out into that we're talking about completely passive cooling no cost oh. right and so that's like the golden you know the, the holy grail of the industry would be to be able to do that so in a hotter climate water may be your only answer and, and cooling it with with liquid and making that work would you be able to compete with somebody that had perfected snow cooling maybe not but you'd come close, closer. Or, or, may, or maybe somewhere in northern Russia. That's what I mean, yeah. yeah. We were talking about this when, when, when those laws changed. And they, they were, it seemed like they were becoming more mining friendly and saying, well, that's kind of okay. Well, uh, you know, if I was a miner, I, or somebody that was in mining, I, how's that not going to cross your mind? You know, you're aware oh. of the climate in, in large portions of Russia and the ability, if you think about it, right? You drop the fucking thing in the snow. Imagine a watertight case and just let the snow pull all the heat away. Now, would that design work? No, it would not because it wouldn't pull the heat away fast enough. But what they have found is if you use a combination of heat pipes and different types of, of heat sinks designs, maybe you could make something work. That's what people have to experiment with. But they have to make it work on a scale like this. It doesn't matter if they can do it with one miner when you're talking about an enterprise where eight megawatts worth of mining power is a fraction of what you can do. That is enormous. Yeah, you know, and you can't melt all the snow in the immediate area because then you have no snow to cool yourself. So, yeah, there's problems. But to me, that would be the holy grail because it completely passive, highly effective cooling. Um, the person or persons that can figure that out are going to have tomorrow's edge in bitcoin mining as long as this continues and as long as bitcoin remains a proof of work coin and others remain proof of work coins
These things are going to be with us. They're going to be issues. And the only other answer, aside from proof of stake so far, has been these sort of ASIC proof coins. But as we know, they're not ASIC proof. They are ASIC resistant. Mm. <laughs> and what they have to do is play this ongoing, it almost becomes like the piracy battle with uh, game producers and, and Hollywood and, and, and everything else. They come out with a new measure to prevent pirates and it takes a little bit of time for the pirates to figure out how to crack it and then oh shit it's cracked so now they got to come up with another way okay asic resistance is the same thing if you have people really interested in mining your coins at the end of the day an asic is just a computer and you can put checks in there and you can put you know different ways to try and do that people are going to figure out a way around it and now your feature is busted. Now somebody can jump on with an ASIC miner and they can mine on your network. So you have to make more changes to the code. So uh. to say something's ASIC proof, if you see a coin saying that, it's probably a good time to ask them some questions and say, well, how could you say that you're, you're ASIC proof? You're ASIC resistant maybe until you know somebody decides it's financially worth their time to figure out how to crack your scheme because that's all it is. It's a scheme. Oh. I just had I just had a let me recall from an incident that occurred yesterday, and I should have brought this up when you asked me at the beginning of this stream. How you doing, Dargo? But yeah, what I failed to mention was just yesterday I had a blind woman say to me, she thought I've got a really big penis, but I think she was just pulling my leg. Wow. I, wow. I was waiting. Uh, are, are you going to blame that one on Roland or are you going to take credit for that? What are you going to do here? I'll take credit for that one. Oh, it's about a big penis. That. Uh, that's nice. But I'll tell you what, though, on a true story, Rob, I got approached by a prostitute today and she said she'll do anything for $10. So guess who got the car washed? <laughs> anything for $10, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, we're nearly shit out of time, people. However, we do have time yeah. for one more. So let's do one more, okay? Why uh, not? Yeah, we'll get some more news. It, 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 we're entering uh, holiday season here. You know, all the uh, the Jewish people are, are lighting their menorahs now. It's Hanukkah time, and they're giving presents to their to their little children. Uh, Christmas time is coming, and the Christians will then do the same. Now, I don't know about the Muslims. They have Ramadan. I don't know if that's the same or what, or, or some shit. I don't know. Uh, but other religions have things around this time of year, too. So we want to include everybody. I just don't know. I'm not being rude. I don't fucking know. I've heard things. I don't yeah. fucking know. I can't keep track of all this shit. I don't practice anything. So for me to keep track of the, the rituals that other people want to, you know, that's just not, not something I'm going to do. But we want everybody mm. to have a good whatever it is they do. You know, uh, yeah. unless you're just a fucking sick fuck and you're doing some some shit, then then don't have a good one. Go off yourself. <laughs> Why you got to be a sick fuck? Just go fucking do yourself in. I don't know what I'm rambling mm. about. Um, Mount Gox, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> That's me trying to say Merry Christmas. I don't know what the fuck. Okay, <clears throat> Mount Gox. Here we, we, we you know that we like to end things on a good happy note. Mount Gox creditors. Mm -hmm. Wait nearly over. <laughs> oh, nearly over. Just hang in there a little while longer, guys, uh, as the trustee announces a draft rehabilitation plan. Um, <clears throat> uh, posted on the Mount Gox website Tuesday, uh, the trustee's announcement states the Tokyo District Court and an examiner will review the draft rehabilitation plan and determine whether to proceed with the rehabilitation proceedings relevant to the draft rehabilitation plan. You know, they could have used a lot less words to say that. That was a direct quote from the fucking announcement. I mean, why? Uh, in any case, uh, the plan, the reason why people are interested in this plan, rehabilitation plan is because it provides for some remuneration of the people who lost <laughs> quite a lot of money collectively in the Mt. Gox scam. And they'll finally see something, not all, they're not gonna get everything back, mm. but they'll see something <clears throat> uh, from that whole debacle and disaster and incident which set crypto back 
uh, you know, a number of the steps forward that it had taken by that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it is now uh, <clears throat> that they'll at least get some kind of uh, something. Something. Yeah. Something. It's better than what I'm, what I'll be getting because just last week, Rob, I got fired from my day job oh. for being a per, for being a pervert. Apparently, oh. I, I don't understand because I'm always hard at work. <laughs> you don't quit, do you? You don't fucking quit. No, you don't quit. You don't quit. No, nah, no. Nah, I, <laughs> I can't believe I just got banned from using Match.com. Apparently, my dick. The term my dick is an inappropriate answer to the question, what do you want most in a woman? Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, I, yeah, I, uh, I would imagine that answer would fly with some women. Uh, the one you met tonight, right? Yeah, yeah, the blind one. <laughs> well, I thought she was pulling uh, my I, leg. I, I was thinking of the prostitute who washed her car, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, that one, too. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Or he almost forgot about her. It was a, it was a very memorable experience. Um, so, uh, as we come up on the hour, uh, I would just like to thank our audience. I'm also going to shill. Uh, I have instructions here, shill, and I'm going to follow those instructions. But, oh. uh, as you know, uh, this uh, production every week, brought to you every week, is a joint production of Crypto Tonight. Uh, and Vacant Minds Media. Vacant Minds Media has just uh, started uh, the re-release. Uh, they, they, uh, there were some out a while ago, but uh, that was more of a test. And, and now they're, uh, the proper release of Cryptocurrency Spotlight is live in the Vacant Ooh. Minds Media channel. Oh, yeah, very exciting. And uh, what this is, each episode is a different coin. That pulls all the data down from CoinGecko, makes a nice little video. We can watch and learn about a coin that maybe you didn't know all that much about uh there might be scams in there there might be you know it's up to coin gecko to, to to clean up their backyard uh the information just gets pulled from them but uh there's different videos up already about 15 or so and those will be coming out in a steadily um and a nice little way to learn about uh, some new projects that maybe you didn't hear about uh, that's from make it minds media giving you the media that you deserve very nice, Rob. Very nice. So once again, for those interested in checking it out, go to YouTube and type in vacantmindsmedia.com. We should leave a link down beneath this video too, Rob. When I was told that I had to show that on tonight's show, I, I immediately agreed because I didn't want that motherfucker to pull a knife on me. I think you know who I'm talking mm. about. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hiding behind a curtain and then pulling a knife on somebody. I mean, whoever heard of something? <laughs> fucking holy shit! Like, I mean, how are you gonna how are you gonna go from cowering? <laughs> weird, weird. Anyway, it's been it's a weird nice. world we're living. I, you know, sometimes we come off as flippant. That's our fucking gig, people. I don't know what to tell you. I've got Rob Ford up on my wall. So if you don't get it by now, then you're probably never going to get it. Uh, however, on a sincere note, uh, we do have a uh, somewhat steady of small viewership, and, and we take shots at you, too. Uh, but you should know that we do appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you tuning in every week. We try to make this show interesting. Um we do have a couple of things in the pipeline that maybe will make it more interesting for you. I don't know. But as the new year comes, <laughs> uh, you should be uh, aware uh, that we intend to continue offering this level of entertainment to you. You can take it, leave it. If you think you can do better elsewhere, go watch Superman or, or whoever the fuck it is. Um, but I like our show. Uh, Darko likes our show, so we're going to keep doing it. Until next week, then, everybody. Uh, stay safe, be well, take care of each other, and we are the Degenerates. Say goodnight to the people, Darko. Rock on, motherfucker! Well, there's only one thing to say. It's a most unusual, most unusual, most unusual day. Cut. Credit.